are you recording already? <laughs> uh, hello there. Um, golly. Uh, I don't know what has been going on uh, in YouTube land of late, but um, you all are totally crazy because I have been receiving all sorts of love. Um, <laughs> it came out of nowhere and um, I've had a lot of fun. I've enjoyed uh, reading all your comments. So thank you very much. It is appreciated. Um, I've been inspired to do a little show and tell by one of my friends who said, it's time, it's time, it's time. You've had Betty for almost four years. Uh, go ahead and show people all the little bits and pieces that you've done. And so here I am. Um, I have dropped Alfie off at the doggy spa. He's getting pampered today. So this is a good time for me to uh, let you all take a look inside. Um, <laughs> come on in. Okay, let me find a hair tie and get rid of this mop. So, I do want to share with you, uh, before I go on and on about all of the little modifications that I've made, that um, when I originally purchased Betty, um, I was given the best advice I never took. Um, yeah, that advice was, when you get your new RV home, go ahead and break something immediately. Ding it, scratch it, put a nail in the wall. Do something to eliminate that fear of protecting your brand new baby. And gosh, I don't want anything to happen to her. Um, which, of course, being a new RV owner sounded completely insane, and I ignored every little bit of it. However, uh, in hindsight, I would give you the same advice now if you are a new RV owner. Um, and I'm not saying to go ahead and break something major, but um, get over the fear of doing something um, permanent to your new vehicle. So go ahead and put a nail in a wall or something minor. Um, I did not, and for a very long time, um, I was trying to make some changes without doing any structural damage. Um, when I first had a, a ding happen to the outside of the vehicle, it was like this floodgate of relief. Finally, um, she has a scar. Um, I can let go of all of that, and I can just get on with enjoying her um, and also making her mine. So, um, very sage advice that I never took. When it comes to mods, um, I will share with you my experience, and you may or may not have had similar experience, but um, they kind of go in phases. So, when I first uh, got Betty, in fact, before I even received her, um, I went through this whole nesting period where I was scouring the internet and looking for things that I thought would be perfect for inside of her and um, looking at equipment that I might need, etc. And um, I bought a lot of stuff, um, which I know everybody says, don't do it. And again, I didn't really listen. Um, and again, I tell you, really do listen to that. Just get the absolute basics that you need, because as you start to use something, then your, your personal um, wants and needs will um, come to light and you can shop accordingly. So I have, um, after the first year, I eliminated a lot of the items that I thought would be uh, really helpful to have and turned out not to be so. Um, so the first series of mods were not really mods, they were more um, decorative. I did things like um, put in carpeting, um, I did buy some little deck pillows, I used a lot of those command hooks to hang things. Um, like I said, a lot of things I did because I really didn't want to uh, damage or structurally change anything about her. Um, the next phase was actually acknowledging that certain things I wanted to do would be very helpful to me. And even though um, I was doing some structural changes, I wasn't necessarily making massive changes and or damage. Um, things like installing a WeBoost, 
uh, creating a little flip down tray. I put a dimmer switch in here. Um, I recreated my entire kitchen area uh, without causing any permanent uh, changes to that. So um, yay for me. Um, and then as time goes on, I started realizing uh, there are other things I really wanted to do. Um, tearing the bed apart early on uh, was a big deal for me. Um, I took that apart and I saved all the pieces and everything that I did to make the bed smaller. I went into the same original little screw holes. I was very careful not to create any new uh, damage to it. Um, and I did a video on that if you care to watch it. Um, I've since made even more changes to my bed, um, which have, uh, it was a temporary thing just to see how I liked it. And it's two years in the making now, and I really do like it, but I have uh, big plans to rip the entire back area apart and recreate a new garage um, slash bed area. <clears throat> so that's a big project uh, that I'm looking forward to do in the future. Um, and uh, I ultimately did chop into part of the cabinetry and I started really embracing that this was my vehicle um, and I was going to do what I needed to do uh, to make it function for me so that I would be happiest in it. Um, and that is the point of mods. A lot of people get an RV and feel like they should do a mod or they have to do a mod and that is so not true. Um, a lot of people just get in it, throw a few things in there, and get out there and enjoy it. Um, and that ultimately is its intention. It's for you to go and, and live and enjoy and have adventures and um, share your life with others. So uh, don't feel that you have to do modifications. Um, only do something if you've decided that it's really going to make you happy or benefit you in some form or fashion. I'm going to uh, do a walkthrough. Um, I have my friend David who's helping me today. He's videoing. Say hi, David. Hi, David. Um, this is probably going to be lengthy and I'll be rambling for a little bit. So uh, you may want to get a snack and a drink or something like that. Um, I will say that uh, I am somewhat invigorated now to do some more videos um, thanks to your encouragement. So if there is anything that you would like to see more of or have me explain or any problems that you might be having that you're looking for solutions for, please let me know in the comments. And if you see a comment that you like, give it a thumbs up. And um, I'm really looking for uh, you all to guide me on what it is that you want to see uh, from my Crazy Lady Cranky Dog channel. So um, all right, let's get to the show and tell. I'm going to start with the kitchen. As you can see, it looks very different than it did when I first got the vehicle. Um, and that's because I love to cook. So this little area, as tiny as it is, I call it my kitchen. Um, and I've served some pretty big meals from it. Um, when I'm at a campground and there's a lot of people, I do cook outside, but um, sometimes weather and all our smaller crowd, it's just easier to do it in here. So um, this was one of the first areas that I focused on for making mods because this was an area that was important to me. Um, I ended up making all of these changes without doing any structural permanent damage um, to the vehicle, and I'm pretty proud of that. So the first thing I did is I took the glass for the sink off. Um, and that allowed me to put this um, little, uh, I think it's a Joseph and Joseph piece, um, in here. It fits perfectly. And this is a portable sink. Um, there is a draining rack inside. There's also a, an actual drain. So it can hold water like a bucket and you can release the water. Very often I'll use this outside to wash things up. Um, or I can open the drain and actually just let it all go into my grain tank right in here. So um, I love this item. Um, the next thing I did was I put these little boxes that I found at Target um, because I love to grow fresh herbs. Um, they just make a big difference in the quality of the food that I'm able to produce. So that has facilitated me having a little garden, which is very enjoyable for me. Um, I also make sprouts. I have a little sprout maker. Um, 
microgreens and such. Uh, microgreens are really good to grow in a really small space because they're easy, super duper easy, and very nutrient dense. Um, maybe I'll do a video about that one day. The other thing I did was I really wanted to have more vertical space in here. The wall that comes with this vehicle only ends right here and the rest of it was sort of a vista uh, looking out the window stuff. The hole that I have or the view that I have is plenty big enough for me. So I bought this little um, pegboard from Ikea, uh, which I've utilized this quite a bit throughout the vehicle. Um, and I turned it sideways just because uh, it's what I had to do to make it work. It is really just sitting in there with leverage and pressure. There's nothing holding it in place, no nails, no screws. Um, so that's worked out well. Um, by turning it on its side, I did change the direction of the little holes. So the pegboard system that they sell with it didn't really work except for the uh, little um, bands. Um, but I had these from a system that I used to use on my cabinetry. Um, there was a, a plate that hang, hung off the cabinets and these hung on it and they happened to fit perfectly in those little holes sideways. So uh, that worked out really good. Um, I got lucky. Um, and I put my paper towel uh, right here because that way I can access it from outside and inside. And because it's um, being hung by this elastic cord, there's enough pressure on there that it doesn't unravel as I'm driving. So this has worked out really, really well for me. Um, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, the one thing I did change structurally underneath is this fascia right here was just a solid board. Um, and when I looked under there, I could feel that there was space. So I got it in me that I wanted to turn this into a flip down tray. Um, it was a little tricky. I had to empty all the drawers, take the drawers out. Um, but I, I managed to <laughs> persevere, got it done. And I have this lovely little flip down tray now where I keep all of my dishwashing supplies um, and things like that. So I just gained all of this little storage space that I didn't have before. Um, pretty handy. And while I had everything torn apart to do that, I ended up putting a little um, dimmer on my light switch, um, which is down here. And uh, that was one of my favorite mods because um, at night I don't need all of these bright LEDs. So it's really nice to dial that way down and just have a little bit of mood light. Um, so that's my kitchen. This is the pantry. It came with a shelf. I, of course, took the shelf out immediately. Um, and I built myself a little slider out of some scrap plywood that I had. I covered it in the same fabric that I used in my back doors, which you'll see in a little bit. And I put my Berkey in here. Um, and it's handy because I can take my faucet. Hello. right here back in it does its thing and if I want to I can get a glass out I've got nails in that one and I can just get some water right there and what I've done is behind that I just put a basically a garbage bin which I, I just put paper in here now. I want to build it up. Um, but that's sort of my dry food good storage. And it's fairly deep and it's fairly handy and it holds lots of good stuff. So that's worked out really well for me. This little cupboard is super skinny and it used to open this way. I turned it into a shoe cabinet. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. I have an organizational video planned. But in order to use it properly, I normally sit on this step and put my shoes on from here. So I wanted to open it from this side. I've got some of them in there now. Um, and in order to flip this around, I literally had to dismantle this entire seat cover and bench to pull that up, flip it around, and bring it back down. <laughs> 
In the process of doing all of that, I discovered that this piece here was originally just a fascia piece. It didn't move, it didn't have any use at all, but behind it, it was an open area, a cavity, and of course, you know, maximizing space in this thing became pretty optimal for me. So I actually turned it into a little mini um, liquor cabinet. I have two bottles in here, um, and it's insulated, so it keeps everything at really good temperature. So when you're in a really tiny vehicle like this, optimizing space and using every little nook and cranny that you can find, um, if it benefits you, is very helpful. Um, one of the latest mods that I did is I actually adjusted my table. Let's pan around and take a look at it. So this is the standard table that came in the vehicle, but what I ended up doing is I built a little piece up here which pulled the table away from the wall and it gave me this area which allows me to put a drink on there. If this table is down, I still have an area to put drinks and stuff on. It's become a little collectible catch-all right now. But, um, and then in the process of, the, of doing that, I added a little uh, area to put. I've got that big road atlas. Um, so that's a really handy spot for that to be kept. And um, if you are looking to make a net and you want one that's a very specific size that's elastified to hold things, if you know somebody that crochets, I actually just crocheted that with some elastic um, paracord type stuff. Um, but I was able to do it to the exact size that I needed and the color that I wanted. So um, tap on your crochet friend's shoulder and ask them to do that for you. Um, this particular table expands. I'm going to cross over. Um, it flips up to get bigger. And the manufacturer just had these little pieces here, which doesn't really provide a whole lot of support. And uh, we've sat four or five around here playing cards. So what I actually did was I made this little piece, which just Velcros to that panel. It's really thin. So it doesn't get, it doesn't interfere with this table coming up and down. And it acts as a support. I put one leg under the original piece. And then when I flip it over, I have another support leg under this piece and it just makes it much, much sturdier. So that, and that was incredibly helpful. Um, this was a little tricky to do, the actual building out. And the only reason it was tricky is because I did it with no uh, additional help. So I had to kind of balance the table on my head while I was under there with a screw gun trying to get everything to work. Um, I wouldn't advise doing that. Get help when you can. Um, but that's made a huge difference in the enjoyment of this dinette area. Um, it's just made it more comfortable. I raised it up, which gives more uh, leg room. This is one of the first things that I did. This vehicle came with three hooks on the wall. Um, and I knew that I wanted like a catch-all for, initially it was for bits and pieces and doggy things and maps and stuff like that. It's, uh, we're in the year of uh, COVID and pandemic. So now it's got all of my masks and sanitizer things in there. But what I did is this is just a inexpensive file box that I bought from Target. I took the hooks out of the wall and I screwed this onto the wall. I put a little piece of cork in between just to buffer the wall. And I screwed right into the original holes that the, screw, that the hooks were in. So I caused absolutely no damage to the structure of this thing. And then what I did was I took the hooks and I put one on the side and two on the side reinforced them with a little bit of wood, so I reuse those. And now instead of just having three hooks here, I actually have a very usable additional cabinet space. I also have a um, cutting board, which I can put on the top of this thing. And it hooks under the lights and it kind of just gives me an additional workspace when I'm in the kitchen. So. Things like that and putting things on the walls with contact hooks or whatever you call these things um, that are non-destructive uh, was sort of rampant and what I did for a full year. 
The bad mar that you have all seen, um, this might help you see it just a little bit better. I did get lots and lots of comments. Um, I ended up chopping the bed. The original bed that came in the Heimer came up to here. It was a very big bed and it was lovely. I, however, generally travel solo with Alfie. I didn't need all that bed. I needed more space. So I ended up taking all of the bed components out. They're safe and stored. If I ever want to put them back in, I can. Um, in the meanwhile, I just recreated a smaller bed. It allowed me to get a lot more storage space. There's my junk drawer. Um, I have on this side two big drawers and that's where I basically keep all my clothing. And I intentionally left a little gap here which allows the curtain to be open if I need it. And it also allows me to put um, things like I travel with this enormous tray because I like to cook and I like to entertain. So this is the perfect spot for that to be stored. It's secure, it doesn't move when I drive. The other thing that this does is it gives more room for somebody to be right here. So if I am actually cooking in the kitchen, I can have a guest hanging out in this area, helping me or chatting or whatever. Um, and that's been very nice and helpful. Because I raised the bed, there's two um, ledges, I guess you would call it, that the original bed structure sat on. Um, and now I actually am able to use it for additional storage. So I use a little A-clamp to secure everything while I'm traveling. But I have these trays now that I literally am using those ledges as little sliders. And this particular tray just happens to be a boot tray, um, which fits perfectly. Um, I'm storing extra veggies and stuff in here, but this gives me also additional prep room when I'm working in the kitchen. If I need to just sit a dish down or something, I have additional counter space now, and that comes in really, really handy. So in my initial um, making of this little area, I had a DC outlet installed. That's this guy right here. But it was literally just loose because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And um, that worked out really well for me for about two years. But yesterday I purchased this new fan, which I'm very excited I got. And so in the installation of the fan, it inspired me to actually finally build a box to encase this DC item. I also put my little solar controller on there. So I'm going to just pull this out to show you what that looks like. Um, this DC outlet, I had one DC fuse panel fuse in my panel that was not used by the manufacturer. And so I didn't do the work myself because I don't like to tackle electrical stuff, but I had somebody install this to that fuse. The advantage of having a DC outlet back here, which I never had before, is I can charge my cell phone. I have one of these cigarette lighter plugs here. And occasionally, if I'm traveling with a lot of people, I ha carry a tiny little freezer with me, um, and I run that on this. And all of that allows, uh, facilitates being used without turning my inverter on, which is really important for maximizing um, the energy that I have in here. When I got the new fan, um, this actually operates off of DC power and it uses almost no power. It's amazing how little it uses. Um, I hardwired this particular unit on the same line as this one, but in front of this on-off switch. So this is always hot. Keep in mind, I have a fuse on this whole line, so if there's ever an issue, that fuse is going to blow and it's going to shut everything down. But the reason I love this fan, I know I have a fantastic fan and I use it. I don't have a rain shield on it, so when it is rainy, I don't have a fan in here. Um, also, when I'm boondocking, that fantastic fan, it makes a little bit of noise and the fact that I have this big thing open at the top tells people there's somebody in here. So I wanted something that was super quiet and very versatile. It has a timer 
so you can set it it's got like two three I don't remember the exact hours um, and it has three speeds that's its highest speed and it's super quiet um, it also facilitates being put in multiple directions I like to use this little knob in the back so I can do that I can rotate it this way I can rotate this all sorts of different ways so it's I've put it right here because I want to be able to get any kind of cooking smells and or smoke out away from the fire alarm I've had to start taking the fire alarm disconnecting it while I cook and then putting it back up um, I know some people stick a shower cap over it I need the fire alarm I want it to be there when there's actually a real fire but I don't need it while I'm cooking um, so this fan drawers hardly any power it's going to be great for when I'm boondocking I did install a wee boost early on and I actually mounted it to the solar panel in the back of the vehicle and I routed the cord through the vent in the bathroom and I came up through a little cutout piece that's behind here and I mounted the internal uh, unit right here um, I originally had it mounted to 120 uh, power and I've just recently hot wired it to DC power um, my internal antenna is here and it allows me to move it on the table or wherever I need to I really like the Wii Boost. it's come in very handy I have another trucker antenna which I have used on occasion I have an expandable pole and a big suction cup which I anchor to the side of the vehicle and I raise it up and get a really good signal when I need to um, what I've done because it's hot wired to DC I don't want it on all the time I ended up putting a switch and I put it inside this cupboard which is right here behind the shoes and that turns my Wii Boost on which you can see because the little green light came on um, love the Wii Boost very handy and action so this is the back of the vehicle and um, this is my other slider I've got this little piece right here which stops it from moving back um, and this is a restaurant tray which just happens to fit it's kind of my uh, wet tray if I have things from the campground that I need to uh, move and it's wet it goes in here and then it doesn't drip everywhere um, but this also slides in and out as I need it which is really handy so my bed the last video that I did I showed you building a little frame and that was a test iteration and it worked really well for me um, but about two months after that I realized that I needed the bed frame to actually move so I pulled it apart and I built a slightly different frame and I've put it on struts and now what that allows me to do is this um, the struts are not quite heavy enough to hold it up when I have all my bedding on it so I put that up for safety but this has now given me a ton of room for extra storage um, this is the piece that I sort of extended and I have lots and lots of equipment in there that go all the way down uh, so there's a long length there um, that's very handy the other thing that I decided to do um, which a lot of Heimer Active owners did is this unit came with a uh, wheel carrier that was too cumbersome for me um, so I took that away but I like to carry a spear with me and this was my ultimate sacrificial act is I actually cut into my cabinetry um, but I put my spare tire inside I got a few more two things in here I'd have to move um, the spare tire is bolted to the side of this cabinetry and clearly I still have a lot of room for other storage in there 
Um, I have some still shots of when I actually did this, which I'm going to um, include in this video. Um, and what I ended up doing was I made myself a new door um, because I wanted to have these little baskets and things for catch-alls. And that has worked. This system with the bed being able to lift up so I can get under there has been extremely helpful to me. The other thing that I did uh, right off the bat was I removed the black panels that were on these doors. There were solid black panels on here. And I took them off primarily to insulate, which I'm just pulling this away to show you this insulation. This um, has insulated. It also really, really helps with uh, sound, dampening any kind of noise. Um, I ended up just taking, after I insulated it and I saw the room and the space that was in there, I decided to set the original panels aside so they can always go back on here. And I took a piece of Luan, I cut it to size, I matched up the original holes, I used the original, um, I don't know what the official word is for these, but the attachments. And I covered it with this uh, marine vinyl. Um, this has worked out really well for me because I've gained all sorts of storage pockets in the bottom. The one thing that I would not do if I was doing this again is to have this top hole, and I'm actually going to fill this in um, soon. The mechanics for the door opening and closing runs right through there. So that's not a usable interior pocket space, but I put paracord in all of these bits to sort of become holders for other things. This is very useful. I gained all this room on the bottom of these doors. And, um, you know, I have my external shower here, a mat. There's just a lot of outside garagey things that are living in the door, which makes it really handy. This is just showing you this material with the entire panel off. Um, and this is the panel. I've just made a little change and I've added a solid surface back there. Um, and just so you don't all think it looks perfect on the back side, it's fairly janky, but it does the job. Um, FYI, if you do try to do this, I tried multiple glues, and over the course of two years that these things were up there, most of the glues melted. Um, HVAC tape is the only thing that held, so I've added more bits and pieces of it in there. But um, easy peasy. So my very favorite mod out of everything I've done it would have to be one of the very first things I did, and that's my little privacy curtain. Four years later, it's still going strong. It is that easy to get completely private inside in a second. Um, very handy if I just want to stop and have lunch and be private, get dressed. Um, even when I'm parked at the grocery store, nobody needs to know what's back here. Um, curtain comes in handy. So, uh, still to this day, one of the things I use almost every single day, multiple times. Love it. <laughs> Are you still there? Good Lord, if you're still watching, you deserve a smiley face award. Thanks so much for sharing this time with me. Um, I hope you uh, got inspired to do one or two things yourself. Um, but for now, it's time. Go outside, enjoy, have an adventure. I have to go and get Elfie. Till next time. Thanks so much.